peace. This is White Raptor News Ministries. How's everybody doing? I want you to take a look at this picture here. Okay. This is inside Vatican Audit Audience Hall. Okay. This, my friend, is a serpent. All right. This, my friend, is the Pope sitting in front of an idol. Okay. With Jesus coming out of the... Uh, from lower earth and I don't know if you can see that folks but those are fangs with an eye and an eye and the Catholic Church and, and for some reason the people can't seem to see this that somehow that they're telling you straight to your face that the Catholics are the serpent race if you can't make that connection man you are just you're gonna fry you understand? There's no turning around or understanding that. Look, take a look. Watch what I show you. Images of Catholics with tattoos on their face. This is what you get. These are your people, man. Fallen angels. And you're not to be tattooing yourself up with these kinds of things, right? Look at this one here. So right here. I mean, look at these things, huh? <coughs> things. Because that's what I call them. They're things. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Could you imagine meeting one of these people, man? They're demons inside of skin suits, folks. Okay? So I'm seriously having a hard time with you not being able to put that together. That you can't look at that and see that this church is set up like a serpent. All right? Your Catholic church here is set up like a serpent. This is the Catholic race. It's the serpent race. This is their God. I hope this can let me enlarge in it. I want to show you guys something about this picture here. Okay? Here you have Jesus' face. I don't know that I can enlarge it. There you go. This is Jesus' face right here. But his hair flowing in the wind. This is a serpent. Jesus, I've taught for a long time now that Jesus is 666. All right? And they're coming out. Um, and the truth is being exposed. America. Wow. That's you, black man. Yep. This is not. No, 
grocery. Boy, I hope I don't get a copyright. I only did that because they allowed her to play it on her channel here. I want to show you guys something. I've come to Anna, uh, Anaya's channel, okay? They're blocking me, right? I know you guys probably say you're full of it. They ain't blocking anything like that, right? No. Once they start doing this stuff, I was threatened by some this guy on Facebook the other day. He told me he'd, he'd stab me a hundred times, man, and leave me bleeding in the street. Yeah. And, uh, I didn't, actually, I didn't, uh, look at, um, I didn't screenshot those, but I'm tired of it. Um, these people, they infringe on your, uh, see, she, Anaya here is leaving me comments. I had to this morning, whoopsie daisy. Yeah, there we go. This is, see, because they don't want us talking with one another, right? This is the, the comment that I left to Anaya, right? When I watched her sing this song and speak those lyrics of being erased, it made me think of the movie Eraser with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why do you suppose they blocked me from being able to make comments like this? Because, folks, I have tapped into Hollywood, and I know exactly what Hollywood is telling us and stuff, man. Why do they equate... Jesus with the cross, vampires with the cross. We'll get to that in a minute. I'm going to finish reading this. The more I read, the more I come to grasp that this reality is not real. And the only way to redemption is through a contrite heart, repentance, and have a great deal of remorse for your transgressions to the point of shame. And all of this must be to one God. Since Brother Rap has left this world, you have shared wonderful counsel and I have been and have been a blessing to befriend thank you so they block that they block comments like that why because they don't want people knowing that that we're uh we're communicating man people are starting to wake up okay so I wrote her again and said to tell her that they were blocking me I just screenshot my last comment and they are not allowing me to post now they don't want white man, Gentile, and a black woman of God coming together. They hate it. They don't. Listen, I got to show you something now. Let me show you. All right here. Beautiful parables right here. Remember the covenant our Most High gave to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis 26 and 3. Stay in this land as foreigners, and I will be with you and bless you. For I will give all these lands to you and your offspring, and I will confirm the oath that I swore to your father Abraham. Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and through him all nations of the earth will be blessed. Let me be very clear. Nations will be blessed through the children of Israel that bless Israel. You're not getting blessed if you're not going to return the blessings to God's children. It's that simple. Genesis 18, For I have chosen him so that he will command his children and his household after him to keep the ways of the Lord, the supreme spirit of truth, the living omnipotent force that moves all things in place by doing what is right and just, and in order that the supreme omnipotent force that moves all things in place may be upon Abraham what he has promised. And when I think of this parable here, I think of Galatians 3.19 where it says, Why then the promise? What was its purpose? It was added after the promise to Abraham to reveal to the people their guilt. That is to be made aware of the transgressions of sin. And the law was ordained through angels and delivered to Israel by hand a mediator, Moses, the mediator between God and Israel, to be in effect until the seed would come to whom the promise had been made. That's Galatians 3.19, the Amplified Version. 
Okay, so that's what makes me think of the promise there. I will surely bless you and I will multiply your descendants like the stars in the sky and the sands on the seashores. Your descendants will possess the gates of their enemies. Malachi 3, 6, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, which is Israel, are not consumed. So, um, this is Anna's channel, An Anaya Obadiah. Go over there and smash her like button. I just smashed it. Go over there and give her a thumbs up. She's got a lot of good content. She's been doing a lot of re-uploads. So, also, I want to I want to bring to you a little awareness here. Okay, we're gonna uh, expose Jesus for who he really is. <laughs> oh, that crucifixion is going to save you from a vampire. You know why this is so funny? Look, look, John chapter 50, John chapter 656 Bible Hub. John chapter 656 Bible Hub. Look, Jesus here is saying, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Okay? That looks like this right here, a vampire. She's got blood sucking down her face. Jesus wants you to eat his flesh. He wants you to drink his blood. Okay, man. Check it out. Let's get to it. Let's expose Hollywood for what it is. Go, it'll be all right. Go, take her and go, Amy. Okay, I got to do this in waves, man. I got to fast forward and stuff because I'll get tagged with the copyright strike here. Really? That's a mighty big cross you got there, Charlie. <laughs> uh, we don't want to miss that part. <laughs> Charlie, not the cross, Charlie. Not the cross, Charlie. <laughs> not the cross, Charlie. You know what that cross is? <laughs> I'm telling you, Christians, Catholics. I mean, when I first came into this truth, man, I hated you guys. I, I, I hated myself because I was a Christian and I was so deceived, man. I hated the world. It's taken me three and a half years to slowly calm down. I'm just now starting to come back into peace of myself and feel compassionate and sorry for all of you that you just don't get it. You can't see the truth that's being delivered to you in these, these movies. So Jesus, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, just as the living father sent me. So father, his father also Folks, when, when I hear the word father, I mean, not everybody may agree with me on this here, man, but I think, I think the father of lies. I think that, um, that there are absolutely two different Jesus Christs that take place, all right, in this Bible. And anytime you're talking about uh, a flesh eater, that is a vampire. Well, why is this important to me? Mark chapter 15, verse 37, Bible Hub. Go through this. And Jesus let out a loud cry and he gave up his last breath. He breathed his last. Okay, over here you have he breathed his last, breathed his last, breathed his last. King James Bible, though, is the, the go-to Bible that everybody goes to on this plane of existence and says that it's untampered with and it's the... the, the perfectly written manuscript of God's words and if you believe that you're you're in a deep haze and asleep as well okay because this this is telling you who the ghost is right here this is telling you straight up that Jesus cried with a loud voice and he gave up the ghost okay well what's what's the problem with that I don't know why these connections are so simple man but a ghost is the spirit of the dead so when it says that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he gave up the ghost, that's the spirit of the dead. And the spirit of the dead is the demon. It's the devil. It's a phantom. How do I confirm this right here? 
Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 Bible Hub. You guys need to pay attention to what it is I'm saying. I'm showing you pictures of the Vatican. I'm explaining to you what the parables are saying. I am bringing hidden information to you about the scriptures. This man, this, this God here that created a man in his own image, this God that created himself in an image, this God is a phantom. Well, who's the phantom? It's the one that gave up the ghost. Jesus is the ghost, remember? Right here. A ghost is a phantom. Jesus Christ died on the cross and he gave up the ghost. The ghost is the spirit of the dead. A demon, a devil, a phantom. This God, Elohim, this is a bad Elohim created a man in God's own image. This this entity, this is an entity, this is something that is used of the supreme God. It's a plural of Eloah, God's in the ordinary sense. It's key and crucial for your salvation to understand the difference between singular and plural. Singular is the supreme authority, the writer, the master, the self-existing eternal one, the power and the force that moves all things in place. He is the visible and the invisible. He's all you can see and all you cannot see. That is the supreme spirit of truth. This God here is a two-faced God. Okay, Is love not two-faced on this realm? Come on, answer the question yourself. If you're not sitting there and saying, well, you know, he's got a good point there, man. Every time I get in a relationship with something, shit goes south of the border. Everything's sweet for six months. Everything's sweet for a year. The honeymoon period's all good. And then, bam, light switch gets turned on. And the next thing you know, you're just at each other's throat all the time. Divorce is running rampant in this nation. And it's because of this, people like... Satan doesn't have any power over you. No, Satan is the God of flesh, is what you got to understand. And the flesh is created in an image. The flesh isn't even real. The flesh is to shade. We've been shaded in skin. That's what it means. This man that was created himself in an, is an illusion. Okay? Also, keep in mind, when you go to, let's see, right here, the very first one, international version so god created mankind in his own image mankind here when you add the sum of this word here mankind it comes to 66 and mankind is created on the sixth day mankind is created here always to remember this is the sixth day that's going on and mankind created here he created him mankind here he created him one a manna a male and a female. He created one man. Why doesn't this parable read? And in the image of God, he created him and her, male and female. He created them. So this God that is being created in an image is the devil. It's that simple. This is the devil. This is this one right here. Watch. Genesis chapter 3 verse 1, Bible Hub. The serpent. Okay, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Who's the serpent? Right here, it's kind of small, but that's Pope Francis right there. And also, Pope Francis' name comes to 666, but don't get lost in that as well, okay? Pope Francis today, this is why they always keep a, a, a priest, one of these cardinals or whatever you... These hierarchy angels, that's what this is. This is a hierarchy fallen angel. This is the God that they serve, Jesus, a dead man coming from the pit. These are all dead souls that are here. All right, look, it's showing you right there. Look at, look at his hairpiece. Here's Jesus's face right here. That's a serpent, man. That's a snake right there. Okay, I know you guys just can't stand to hear that, but this auditorium audience hall right here, thats those are the eyes. That's this thing right here on each side of the building, one on this side and one on that side. Okay, auditorium hall, that's the eye. These are all your scales. Okay, the two jacks, the jackal, 
the jackers the jack you up if you can't see that that is that is a serpent okay you're as blind and you're gonna fry if you can't see that that is the serpent then you're forged from the fire okay Look at this little mutt face here. I don't know if I can play this one. And then, boom, it shows you the cross once again. Why do they always use the cross in the whore of Hollywood? I asked that question earlier. John chapter 1, verse 17. John chapter 1, verse 17. According to Wikipedia, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The New International Version translates the passage as, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Lie. <laughs> Okay, John 1, no one has ever seen God, but the only Son who him who is himself God and is in the closest relationship with God has made himself known. King James, no man has seen God at any time. Jesus was a man, <laughs> but the only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. I got to laugh at myself. I was off track. This wasn't really the parable that I was looking for. I was looking for this one here. Revelations 1.17. I didn't say Galatians. Revelations 1.17. Bible Hub. Right here. John's vision at Patmos. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. Why is John falling at Jesus Christ's feet like a dead man? Okay, because anybody that's worshiping something that is an idol, a stick, mankind, mankind created on the sixth day, mankind is the beast created on the sixth day. I got to go deeper with you than that. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, but he placed his right hand on me, Jesus said. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Well, what does this talk? This, That parable talks, it hits... Um, Revelations 22, 13. Let's go ahead and pull that one up. We want to make connections here. Chapter 22, verse 13, Revelations, Bible Hub. Right here. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That confirms here Jesus is the first and the last. Well, what's the first and the last? Colossians 1, 15, Bible Hub. The sun right here, here's your connection. The sun is the image right here of the invisible God. If God is invisible, how can Jesus or any of us be the image of something that is invisible and can't be seen? This is why the Supreme Spirit is telling us that we don't worship any graven images. And let's not forget that this God here again, as you can see, is a theos. It's a deity God. It is a supreme divinity the hidden word for divinity is a divided entity because I'm, I've been teaching that the language of English is a split tongue language, has two meanings. It has hidden meaning within the meaning. The very word image means I'm a mage. The supreme divinity is a magistrate. Magistrates are men. Magistrate is mankind that's created on the sixth day. These are the ones that are used of the supreme spirit. Now, the beast, the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. Well, <clears throat> what's this talking about? What, what beast is, they, is the serpent more crafty than any other beast of the field right here? Because it's all taking place on the, on the uh, sixth day of creation. This is the sixth day of creation. God made the beast of the earth according to their kind. That's what it's talking about here in uh, Genesis 3.1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman replied, we may eat 
the fruit of the tree in the garden, but the tree in the middle of the garden we may neither touch nor eat, or we shall surely die. And then this is where Jesus, the serpent, says, You shall not surely die, because God knows in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall become as gods. And this is confirmed also here. Is it not written in your law that I have said ye are gods? Rolling, rolling, rolling right here. Jesus replied, Is it not written in your law I have said ye are gods? Jesus said, we are gods. When did he say that you're gods? When you came into the garden and he told you guys, you shall not surely die that day. This is when. I believe it's five. We got to move on down here to five. Okay, for God knows that you eat, that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. King James Bible over here. For God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods. Jesus is the one that said, ye shall be as gods. He's telling you that ye shall be as gods. Well, who told us that? Jesus did when he came into the garden. Right there, and he told you, man. God knows that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be like God, knowing good and evil. Touching right there, John 10, 34, Jesus replied, is it not written in your law? The law, folks, is the commandments, you know? When you love God, you keep the Ten Commandments, okay? Your creation, I want you to imagine like this, okay? Your creation, your soul... The Supreme Spirit has placed your soul inside of a flesh suit. He's given you life. He's allowed you to experience this, 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 uh, inc this incarnated life cycle. Okay? But the thing is, is you've, you, your mind is erased. So, yeah, your memory has been erased when you're born into this plane of existence. Okay. All right, folks, I think that's good enough. I hope that this helped you out. All praise and glory to the mighty most high. Listen, folks, if you can't look at these images and you can't see that there's, that there's something terribly wrong here at the Vatican and that you can't see that this is the serpent race and these people are dead, okay? We are the walking dead. There was a race of people, mankind, created on the sixth day of creation, and they are the walking dead. Here, I, look, check this out. See, so I've been telling people for a long time that we live in a system, a 666 system, and it's a game simulation. So this boy here, he puts in 666, and he loads it up, and it's a 666 program, right? It's a floppy disk. Welcome to the program, it says. Loading game program. Right? So this guy here, he's rolling, and he's talking about the 666. Welcome. So it's a game simulation. But what I want to show you most of all here is these people here. All right? Look at how dead they look. I'm telling you, they look dead, right? That's the walking dead. That's what we're trying to show you. You need to understand what you are. You fell away from the Spirit, okay? You're an infinite piece of the Supreme Spirit, but He has encapsulated your soul inside of flesh. There. That's the dead. Okay, now there's one right after this here. He sings here. You can see that these are the dead. I'm showing you. Right there. Take it off for a second right here. Give me one second. I said, Jesus, won't you save me from this evil man of sin? Jesus, won't you save me? I said, Jesus, won't you save me? Jesus, won't you save me? And you got a dead skull right there in front of your face. Folks, Jesus is 666. Here, let me show you some more. Now that I'm rolling, now that I got some more on my head. One second. Here, let's really expose Jesus for who he really is. Jesus right here. Okay. 
ISOs, 2424 is his number. I'm over here to the left. 2424 is his number. 2 plus 4 is 6, and 2 plus 4 is 6. The translationary, uh, the change also is two other Israelites. Jesus Christ is properly Jesus the Christ. Christ is an oil, an anointing oil. The dimethylene treptamine that is produced inside of the corpus callosum has nothing to do with the man, a dead man. Why do you think they call a part of our brain the corpus callosum when corpus in Latin means dead? Is his human name as an incarnate eternal son of God? Well, we are all eternal beings of the supreme spirit. But you got to understand is that the Supreme Spirit gave power to another entity, and it's the Trinity entity that you guys worship here, which is the devil that created this plane of existence in the beginning. That's proven. I prove everything right here. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, Bible Hub. I'm starting to roll on to another phase here. That's what happens sometimes. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Who's the beginning? Jesus is the beginning. Revelation is chapter 22, 13, Bible Hub. Jesus tells you that he's the beginning. He tells you right here, I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning. Jesus is the beginning. What's the beginning? The beginning is this God here, Elohim. This is an evil divinity. It's divine. It thinks of itself as divine. It calls itself divine. It's placed itself as God. It, it exalts himself before God's throne, the spirit of God. This is the God of the material world. This is the God of electricity. When it says in the beginning, this is the beginning of the fall. Okay? Yes. Okay? When it says that Jesus is the end, it means that this is the beginning. What is this? Genesis. Genesis is the beginning. What is the end? Revelations. Revelations is the end, okay? Jesus is the Alpha, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the Aleph. Jesus is the Omega. The Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. This tells us that the Alpha, the Hebrew and the Greek language has been intermingled with one another, and the language that they speak there in Israel today is a Paleo-Hebrew language. It is the language of the serpent. It's a serpent language. The first and the last. Well, what's Jesus? I showed you earlier. That's First Colossians 1.15. For the Son is the image of the invisible God, is the image. Remember, Jesus is the image. Look here, right? Corinthians 4, chapter 4, Bible Hub. 1 Corinthians, okay, uh, does not, conscience is clear. Give me one second, it might be Colossians. Here we are, this is where I was trying to get to. The gods of this age have blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel, and the gospel is a ghost spell, okay, this is word craft. This is word magic that's been placed over you. The light of the ghost spell of the glory of Christ because Christ is the ghost. This is the ghost spell of the glory of Christ, who Jesus Christ, who is the image. Jesus is the image. I showed you earlier. I'll show you again right here, man. First Colossians 115 Bible Hub. Jesus, the son, is the image. You understand? The Son is the image of the invisible God. The Son, Jesus Christ, is the image of the invisible God. He is the firstborn over all creations. How do you like those connections that I make for you there? Can't be denied, can it? This is incredible information that you're receiving right here. So earlier I showed you that Jesus' number in Greek was 2424. 24. Give me a second. Right here, 2424 24, Iasos. This is also two other Israelites. The two other Israelites are um, uh, Enoch and Elijah. But two plus four is six and two plus four is six. Let's take another ride here. What is the number for Christ What is the number for Jesus in Christianity? 
In some Christian numerology, the number 888 represents Jesus. This would be the God angel number right here. Here's the problem. 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. And again, 2 plus 4 is 6. How old was Jesus when he was crucified? 33 years of age. 3 plus 3 is 6. How old was Jesus when he disappeared? He was 12. 1 plus 2 is 3. And 3 represents Strong's Concordance number 3. According to Wikipedia, Abaddon, the number three represents Abaddon. I'm going to get to what I'm going to show you right here, right now, this very second. Okay? Look, 2424 is the name for Jesus in Greek, and it's pronounced Iesos. Okay? Iesus. Zeus. Jesus is the god of Zeus. Zeus is the god of electricity, the god El. El Supreme, the Almighty, the God of electricity, the uh, centropy, the electrification of this materialized world. When we break 2,424 down to its next number, it comes to 66, correct? Strong's Concordance, 66. So in the Strong's Concordance, Strong's Concordance number 66. Okay, means living in the fields as in wild, savage, and furious. Wild and furious. Well, what is that? That's these right here. Genesis chapter 1, verse 25, Bible Hub. Right there. God, see, hidden stuff. You're not going to get this from any Christian minister. I have exposed the truth. Satan wants you to believe that we are all one human race. We're not one human race. We're two races of people, and we've been breeding out vampires. A living race has been breeding out with de the dead, the walking dead, and we've been creating these vampires, these vampires here. Okay. These vampires right here. So 66 are those living in the fields as in wild, savage, and fierce. That's these. When God creates the beast of the field, each according to their kind. This is specifically speaking about the nations. Right here. Uh, 2 Peter 2, 12, these men are like irrational animals, creatures of instinct, born to be captured and destroyed. They blaspheme in matters they do not understand, and like such creatures, they too will be destroyed over here at the King James Bible. But these, as natural brute beasts, what beast do you know on the face of the earth that's brute? You, you think that a lion's going to grab in arms and raise arms against you? He's going to throw rocks at you and spit at you? These brute beasts were made to be taken and destroyed. Something was created to be taken and destroyed. Okay, Whatever it was that was created to be destroyed speaks evil of the things it understands not. It doesn't understand God. That's what it's talking about. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Here we're at Isaiah 11.10. On that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will seek him, and his place of rest will be glorious. That's Isaiah ten eleven. The nations here will seek him, okay? The nations, the thing, well, look, right here. The gods that the Gentile sacrifice to are the devil. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would have it not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord. That's when he wants you to eat his flesh and drink his blood and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. You can't do it. So when it says nations here, it's speaking about the Gentile nations. And Gentile are a troop of animals. That's these parasites right here. Images of military and troop marching in ranks. Right there. These are your beasts of the field right here. It's easy, pleasy, as simple as that you can see. Okay? 
You march in ranks, you carry a gun, you're proud, you kill others, you go into other countries, you loot their fucking land, you kill the people, you kill their children, you drop bombs, you got this this war that they're trying to kick off, this third war in the province of Israel today, and all everybody cares about is shaking their ass. I got news for you, man. The devil of this world is watching you through these these uh, these devices, and if you ain't straight, the spirit is going to use these God Elohim that I showed you here. This God Elohim, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 Bible Hub. This God Elohim right here, he's going to use this God. The supreme spirit is going to use these puppets, these other ordinary gods, these divinities of the supreme God, the supreme creator is going to use these gods because the devil can see who's watching porn and who's screwing on the streets and who's doing wrong and all that. He's like Santa Claus. He knows whether you've been naughty or nice. Only the prize that you're going to get, folks, I hope it's only rebirthed into this, this plane of existence is falling into depravity. Anyways, I hope this helped you. All praise and glory to the mighty most higher creator is one. Put your trust in the spirit of truth. No other. The truth can only come from the spirit of truth. No other. Okay? Much loved to those children that serve and worship one spirit. The supreme spirit that moves all things in place. To his glory all things, both good and evil. This is White Raptor News Ministries.